Hey, what's going on, everybody? Today, we're taking a look at the Crimson Trace CTS 1550. Stay tuned. I picked this dot up months ago, and I originally had it on my Smith & Wesson Shield Plus. The Plus that I got, unfortunately, was in 30 Stupid Carry. I figured I'd try it out. I like a Wildcat caliber anyway, and it's cool, but I was experiencing some severe striker drag with that caliber. I'm assuming it's because of the dwell time, or lack thereof, because it's such a high-pressure round that the gun is just cycling too quick for at least that size of gun and that weight of slide or spring or whatever it may be. So, since I no longer carry the Shield Plus, I got the 43X, and it's riding in a T-Rex arms, uh, sidecar the new gen 2 or whatever it may be in multicam black which i don't think he even offers anymore so get a look at that absolutely beautiful you guys know if you follow the channel for any length of time that i'm a huge fan of harry's holsters link in the description box and the comment section below make sure you check them out but unfortunately for this configuration uh, of a 43X, he does not make a rig for it. I'm running a Faxon match grade barrel in it with the Faxon Exos Comp, Streamlight TLR 7 Sub, and of course the Crimson Trace 1550. Before we dive deeper into the dot and what I think about it and how it's been running for me on this setup, and even previously with the shield, uh, let's give you a, a look at what it comes with and a rough idea about the price. Uh, I paid about a hundred bucks for this thing, and for me, at that price, why not? I figured I'd check it out, and uh, I I see them go for like anywhere between a hundred ish, you know, to about a buck thirty, maybe a buck fifty. I wouldn't spend more than hundred and fifty dollars on this uh, because that's just not the going rate. But anyway. C uh, CTS 1550, okay, Crimson Trace's new entry into the micro compact uh, realm of red dot sites, and I think that's awesome. The more competition that's out on the market, the better it will be in the long run because it's going to drive prices down, it's going to drive engineering further, and uh, we'll get better dots for cheaper prices, and so it's awesome, and realistically, I've had no issues thus far, so... Either way, this is the box that it comes in. No big deal. It is a 3 MOA reticle, which I think that's a really good balance, especially for a carry gun. Some of the dots, the 6 MOAs, the 8 MOAs, whatever it may be, yeah, they're super quick up close, and primarily that's where you're going to be using a gun like this. That being said... If you got to take a further shot, I like the capability of a little bit more precise sight. So 3 MOA I think is a fair balance. Uh, 2 MOA is typically the smallest that they get. So just 1 MOA larger, uh, I think you'll be alright. So anyway, this is the box. Let's dive right into it, see what it comes with. But before we do that, let's check out some of the specs real quick. I forgot to mention earlier. So we did talk about the 3 MOA uh, dot. So again, I am a fan of that. I think it's a, a proper size, especially for a micro compact pistol, a smaller window. Uh, it's way easier to see the dot through a smaller window um, with a smaller dot, right? If you got a big dot just blinding you through the window, it really does you no good. Uh, what else we got? So the, the mounting... Uh, pattern for this dot is the Shield RMSC or the J-Point, and it's shock resistant and vibration resistant and low profile and snag free and all that good stuff. It's got an ambient light sensor. We got a battery life of two years, 20,000 hours, um, and it's been holding up. It's definitely been holding up. I haven't had this for two years yet, so I can't necessarily test the battery life, um, but... As far as the brightness and the dimming and the whatever, it's auto-adjust, okay? So that sensor that they were talking about, it auto-adjusts the brightness of the dot depending on the brightness of your environment. And that's the only downside, in my opinion, about this dot. Either way, we'll get to that in a minute. Uh, I promised I'd give you guys a look inside of the box. Giggity. Got a sticker, uh, always fun to get a sticker, slap it on an ammo can, slap it on the safe, whatever. You've got your little instruction manual, propaganda manual, whatever. Uh, it tells you all the specs and stuff that you need to know about that. So cool, get a little bit of a micro, well, you don't get a little bit, you get one <laughs> little microfiber cloth to clean the lens with. If you're carrying these guns, uh, or even if you're just kind of letting them sit there chilling in the nightstand or even in the safe, uh, eventually the lenses will get 
dusty and dirty and you will have to maintain it. It's something that you don't really have to do running just iron sights, but now moving to a dot, it's giving you more capabilities perhaps, but you also have to maintain a separate thing now. And so make sure if you're carrying a gun with a dot that you clean it out every once in a while because God forbid you got to skin that smoke wagon and get a sight picture and there's dust bunnies and, and whatever all over it, uh, probably not the best idea. So either way, some screws, um, you get the little empty plastic bags. That looks like that's where you put your drugs, I guess. Uh, you do get a cover, so you can cover up the optic for storage purposes or whatever. I would never carry the gun with this on there thinking that you're going to pop it off in the middle of your draw and get to it and whatever. Uh, that's dumb. Don't do that, people. But if you were storing the gun or traveling with the gun or whatever, this will protect the dot and keep it clean, which is a nice touch. Furthermore, you get the Allen key for the proper screw head to attach the dot to the pistol, to mount it to the pistol, as well as the zeroing Allen key for, you know, your windage and elevation. So they do provide the tools out of the box, which is nice. That being said, well, this one, this one is very important. Uh, Crimson Trace likes to use these super tiny little Allen keys for their adjustments. Um, and that's fine. And they're not the only ones that do it, but these things are easily bent as you can see this one's a little bent and uh there there's no when you have a pile of allen keys and you're digging through to find one like this size to adjust your zero uh nothing else does except for this i'll tell you because you're never gonna find the right size it'll always be just a bit too big giggity so either way let's clean some of this stuff up and uh give you my experiences of what I actually think about the dot and how it's been working for me. I hinted to it having a slight little problem um, with the auto adjustment of the brightness and all that stuff. And maybe it's not necessarily a problem because that's how it's designed to be. But in certain lighting conditions, uh, you cannot see the dot. Like right now, it's super bright in the studio. I've got lights over here. I've got lights over there. I've got some lights over there and over there. And uh, so it helps you guys see the gun and everything better and, you know, get some good macros and micros and all that look good for the YouTubes. But um, right now, if I had to skin that smoke wagon, I'm looking through the dot. I don't see one. Um, the nice thing about it, I mean, I barely see it. Okay. So I barely see it, I should say, but it's not giving me any advantage. Uh, I realize I was just out of frame for that. I'm looking through the dot, but looking through the dot, uh, right now with these specific lighting conditions, um, I could barely see the dot and barely seeing the dot is not giving me much advantage, if any, over just looking at the iron sights. But it's one of the things that I really do like about this dot is that it's a direct mount. And it co-witnesses because of that with standard height sights. These are standard height Ameriglow Troopers or whatever. I always forget exactly which ones. But blacked out rear, uh, high vis front with three dot arrangement as far as the tritium is concerned. And uh, these co-witness right through the rear of the sight, which is nice. Also probably a little bit better shown on the sight itself here. Uh, you can see that in the rear there is a little bit of a cutout or an impromptu rear sight that you could use built into the sight itself in case you are not running a rear iron, but I don't know why you wouldn't be. Other than that, though, I'm actually really liking it for the money. Um, it sits really flush. Like I mentioned, I really like that it co-witnesses with standard height sights because A, they're already on the gun, right? I put the sights on. First thing I do when I buy a Glock pistol because the plastic sights that come with them are absolutely subpar and I would not have those on a serious use firearm because I've seen them break plenty of times. They, they shear off, they come off the gun. They bend, they break, whatever it may be. You need a good set of steel sights. I don't care who makes them. I don't care if they glow in the dark or not, but a good set of metal sights on the gun. I like Ameriglow. They got the widest variety of options. And usually the cheapest price, they're using Trigicon Tritium. Um, so it's basically same, same, right? Um, the other sights that I really like are the XSR3Ds. Those are super bright. They got a photoluminescent ring outside the front instead of it just being paint like here on the Ameriglow. Either way, doesn't matter. Get yourself a good set of sights, night sights, blacked out, gold bead front, fiber optic, whatever you want, and just run them. Uh, but if you have a Glock with plastic sights on it, get rid of that shit. 
tactical tirade aside, um, I'm digging the site for what it is and for the money I spent on it. And again, to me, on all handguns, a red dot is a nicety, not a necessity. You need a quality set of irons on a pistol. A red dot can be a benefit by all means. It can help you if you're properly trained on it or with it to shoot quicker, to shoot more precisely at distance, and uh, of course, it's glowing, right? It's a freaking laser beam of some sort projected upon glass that you see visually with your eyes day or night, and uh, so obviously having that night fighting capability with the dot, being able to see the dot, and then also not having to worry about misaligning, say, three dots with iron sights in the dark. Uh, if the dot's on what it's got to be on and you put your booger hook around the bang switch and it gets loud, as long as you don't flinch, you know, it's going to go where it needs to go. And speaking to that, uh, this thing has held zero. I don't have a bazillion rounds through this gun. This is my every single day carry gun. Uh, since I bought it and then since I set it up, it's basically a little mini Roland special for a 43X. This thing shoots like a 19 with the comp on there. It's really accurate because of the facts and barrel. Um, and you can eke a little bit more precision out of your guns running a dot, okay? Especially a smaller MOA dot. Um, it's nice. And when you train on it, it picks up quicker. But either way, I've got at least five, six hundred rounds through this gun. Um, it's basically been in this configuration since I got it. So all these things are being tested at once. And uh, the dot has held up. It has not come loose. It has not lost zero. And uh, the zero on it, it was relatively easy to zero. The tiny tool aside, uh, the increments, they're not super tactile, but you can see the dot move. It's responsive enough, and uh, I was able to get it zeroed with the quickness. I basically just lollipopped the top of my front sight because the sights are dialed in. Uh, 7 yards, 25 yards, basically same point of aim, point of impact, roughly. And uh, so anybody has the availability to go to an indoor range and be able to get that done, get a good zero on your dots, but at least if you throw a dot on the gun and you already know your iron sights are hitting where they need to be, if you lollipop the front sight, you'll be pretty much on and you can fine tune it later. Do I think this thing will hold up? I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I've only had it for months, maybe three, four months tops, um, but at least two months I've had this and been using it every single day. Uh, I forget because honestly it's just been on the gun since I started carrying the gun and that's been a while now. So either way, you know, in and out of the holster, I'm shooting it, I'm training with it, um, I'm messing with it, I'm doing dry fire stuff with it. You know, I've racked it off a table a time or two just to see what would happen. It has not lost zero, it has not broken, and I'm working on a theory thinking that perhaps, and I'm not exactly 100% sure that this might be the case, but perhaps Perhaps uh, the fact that it is a polymer housing, maybe under recoil, it's more solid, not solid, but like it'll much like a polymer frame on a pistol, kind of like move and shake and jive and vibrate and absorb a little bit of that shock. And potentially because it's also lightweight, it's not really clacking back and forth as hard every time the slide cycles under live fire. I don't know. Um, it's been working for me thus far, you know, for a hundred bucks and, and that's fine. You know, again, five, 600 rounds through the gun with the dot on it and it hasn't lost zero, hasn't come loose and uh, it's holding up great. So for the money, I'm impressed with it, you know, for what it is. Like I said, the only thing that I really can gripe about it uh, is the fact that it's auto adjust brightness. I understand that it's a small pattern dot, uh, it's direct mount, there's not a lot of room to work with, you know, with the tiny electronics, the small window, you know, whatever, you know, to have buttons built in on the side or whatever, I mean, other people are doing it, you know, other people are doing it, you could have done a button up here or button forward like Sig does, uh, just to be able to adjust the brightness settings, I don't need a million of them, I would just like a few, just kind of like the Burris Fast Fire 3 I think has, you got like four or five total settings and you can get done what you need to get done with that just leave it on the slightly brighter settings so it's good to go in all lighting conditions and you know if it's in the dark your dot's going to get washed out when you turn your light on anyway so having it a little bit brighter is probably not a bad idea either um <clears throat> so that's that's the only gripe i have with it that's the only gripe is that i can't control the brightness on it 
But I think for everything else that I've seen thus far, uh, owning it for as long as I have, using it for as long as I've owned it, and, and shooting the gun and, and seeing that it's, it's holding zero and it's working well for me, for the money, I don't think it's a bad option. And again, the bigger point too is that it's direct mount. So you could use standard height sights. You don't have to get suppressor height sights um, that are going to cloud up an already smaller optical window of your dot. Uh, I like being able to see as much as I possibly can through the dot. And again, right now with the lighting and uh, the camera, you're not even really picking up the dot if at all. But again, you can see that I can line up my irons perfectly through the dot. So that's the thing too, is if you're using a dot on a handgun, you still always need irons, people. Always, always. Uh, because you have to expect, Murphy's Law, bad shit happens when other bad shit is happening. When you skin that smoke wagon and pull up and press out, that dot might not be there. What do you do? What do you do? especially if you don't have any irons. So make sure you have irons on the gun. Make sure you know how to shoot irons on your gun. And uh, I don't know. I'm interested in seeing how this thing holds up over time. I'm not going to take it off the gun until it breaks or needs a new battery. That's the other thing too is uh, 20,000 hour battery life. So two years, you know, give or take. But uh, you do have to unbolt it to change the battery. It's a bottom feed battery, much like the original Trigicons, uh, or I think they're still even like that. But the Delta Point and a bunch of Holosuns are, you know, top feed or side feed for the battery. So you don't lose your zero. You will lose your zero on this. But again, quick little lollipop on the front sight. You'll probably be all right. So either way, we've rambled on quite enough at this point in the review and uh, I guess technically still just even an initial impression because I don't have a bazillion rounds to the gun but or the dot I should say um, but I'm liking it thus far especially for the price and especially since I don't need an adapter plate that's going to make it sit taller and then make me have to use iron you know co-witness sights suppressor height sights dot sights that again are going to cloud up that sight picture so I'm liking it for the hundred bucks I spent on it for the 130 150 you might have to spend on it uh, to mount it to a shield plus or a Glock 43x or 48 MOS or whatever it is, uh, I think it's decent because again, it's allowing you to co-witness your irons, your standard height irons, which are always going to be there, or at least they should people. And uh, even if the dot breaks, you still got that. So it's a nicety, not a necessity, but if you can afford it, if you can have it and, and, and remember to maintain it and use it, it can be used to great effect. And uh, I think it's a, a nifty little upgrade for... Uh, for 100 bucks, 130 bucks, whatever it is, not bad, not bad. And two, you know, it's made in China or whatever. It's cheap enough, they'll just give you another one because Crimson Trace does have a lifetime warranty. That being said, doesn't mean anything if it goes down in the middle of the gunfight when you need it most. But again, that's why you have your iron. So either way, nicety, not a necessity. But for the money, it's kind of nice so far. So either way, I'll let you guys know what's going on in the future if anything changes. The second it doesn't hold zero anymore, the second it breaks, the second it comes flying off the gun or whatever. Uh, but thus far, I'm actually really liking it. And I think the price point is uh, affordable. I think the feature set is competitive. Competitive. <laughs> competitive. And uh, not bad. You know, Crimson Trace is kind of known to be somewhat of a cheesy company when it comes to their lights and lasers. And it's not professional grade kit. I mean, this holster cost more money than this dot but they both work at least for now stay tuned for videos on all this stuff already in the past or more in the future always to come i appreciate you guys stopping by make sure you leave a like that really helps out the anti-gun youtube algorithm in the fight against it uh make sure you check out the first three links in the description box below of every single one of my videos those would help you fight for your god-given inalienable constitutionally protected and reaffirmed but inherent by birth gun rights people without those we have nothing else because there's no way to fight for them and uh in the meantime remember